Hello my loves, welcome back to another vlog. I've been in the new apartment for three weeks today and I am finally feeling like settled. For someone who changes things quite a lot, as I realise I have done recently, I don't deal with change very well. I find it really overwhelming, so I've just been taking the time to, you know, relax, settle in and get my place how I want it. It has actually been the easiest place ever to furnish, to do interiors for, and I think I really do believe that it's because it was meant for me, this this little apartment in Paris. It was not easy to find and I have written a very specific substack letter all about, I think the title is, exactly how I manifested my dream Parisian, Parisian apartment. And I basically go through the whole manifestation process that I used step by step. I'm not going to go too much into that now, but I will leave a link to that post in case you want to go and read it. But I feel like I feel like I have so much to tell you about this move that I really need to do it in stages. So I thought that I would start with the apartment search, which I know I did last time but the process that I went through this time was very very different because I was so focused on exactly what it was that I wanted. People were quite surprised that I'd moved and I think the biggest question that I've had is why have you moved Jess? What was wrong? Like what was wrong with the the old place? It was it was nice and it was it was really really beautiful and if I could have picked that apartment up and moved it to the area that I am in now, I would never have left it, but that wasn't the case. So I did purely move for area. I'm gonna use a map to give you an idea of like specific locations throughout this vlog. So I'll put a little screenshot up of the area that I was before, which was my very first apartment in Paris that was officially mine. And yes, it was lovely, it was great, but personally, all my favorite cafes, bars, not really, um, you know, re restaurants, not really either, shops, yes, <laughs> museums, art galleries, parks, all that kind of stuff, were nowhere near that area. So I found myself traveling a lot, especially to shoot vlogs that I wanted to, like show specific areas for you guys and photos as well. And in terms of areas, I think a lot of Parisians would say that, you know, I'm crazy because, hello, the 20th is a great area and it is for sure. It just isn't my kind of area. I think, I don't think I'm cool enough to be honest with you. Like it's way too boho and edgy and people will probably take the mick out of me a little bit for being, you know, a um, tourist or whatever, but I like old Paris. I like all the popular sites. I like feeling like I am right in the heart, in the center of the city, which no, isn't very Parisian, but I'm going to do what, what's right for me. If you watched my previous apartment hunting in Paris vlog, you will know, or if you've watched any of these kinds of videos before, you will know just how difficult it is to find an apartment to rent in Paris. It is really, really difficult. You have to have something that is called a dossier, which is like a personal file. I think mine is like 30 pages long. It's absolutely ridiculous. You have to have a guarantor, um, if you're self-employed like I am, you need, you know, tax statements, letters from your accountant, like you name it, they want to see all of it. What I specifically wanted to show you was the apartments that I did go to see. So as I said, I was really, really specific about where I wanted to be and exactly what kind of apartment I wanted to live in. And everyone told me that I was completely crazy because I wanted to live in either the 5th, 6th, 7th or 16th arrondissement. Like that, they were the only options that, that 
they're the hardest ones to find a place in. I wanted something, you know, period, old Paris feeling, something beautiful, and I wasn't budging on any of it. This search was a lot less frantic than my first one because I'd already got a beautiful apartment to look from. So I only went to see things that fit my criteria and that I was, you know, I wasn't, I don't know, I just, I had a more abundant mindset this time. I believed that there were apartments out there, that the right one was going to find me, and it did. I think it took me about two months of searching, which again isn't very long in terms of a, a search for a, a nice apartment in Paris. I feel very, very lucky, very, very blessed. These are the apartments that I went to actually view. So this first one was in a dream location. It was in the fifth arrondissement. It was on quite a busy boulevard, I would say. Not ideal. It was on Boulevard Saint-Michel, which is like a main, quite a main road. So you had quite a lot of road noise. But in terms of location, it was amazing. It was like, you know, five minute walk from the Jardin de Luxembourg, which is one of my favorite places in Paris. So location, it got a really big tick. I was so excited to see this one. I think it was 28 square meters, which was perfect. I was looking for something between 20 and 30 square meters in terms of size. It ticked that box. I actually didn't apply for it in the end. I loved the, the front of it with the two double windows. It was really, really pretty. The building that it was in, I really didn't like. It wasn't, it, it wasn't very clean. Like it was really grotty and just didn't have a nice welcoming feel to it. And I like curb appeal. I wanted, you know, to walk into something that felt really beautiful and welcoming. I just think it, just didn't get a really nice vibe from it. The other thing was it only had windows at one end. So, and it was like a, a long, yeah, like a long shape, I would say. So the further back you went in the apartment, the further towards the kitchen, it had like a, a galley kitchen in there. The further back you went, the darker it got. And the bathroom had no light at all, which, I just didn't really like, I don't know. I really went on intuition with this search and if it wasn't 100% right, I wasn't gonna apply for it because I knew that I had my place and that the right one would come along. In terms of price, this one was 1,300 euros a month. And just to say that in France, it's very different to the UK, that includes all charges and bills except for like if you have wi-fi or um electric is never included as well so you don't have council tax and charge um you know like maintenance charges and all that kind of stuff it's all already included and it was high like that's that was like the top end of my budget and for that i wanted it to be perfect but it was beautifully renovated I'll give it that and I loved that about it like everything was fresh and new and ready to move into just wasn't the one wasn't the one and I, I knew it instantly apartment number two was in the 16th arrondissement again I'll put it on the map for you it was in Otoya which is an area that I really really like it's got a nice like village feel to it I would say the price was so much better than the first one it was 978 euros a month again it was 28 square meters so it was a nice size the difference with this one was it was kind of splayed out the first one was a studio and this one had a nice big bedroom that was the best part of the apartment for sure and then it had a separate kitchen and the bathroom kind of separated the two and there was this corridor. Personally I thought the layout was a little bit awkward. I think when you're dealing with a small space I like to have it open plan so that you can make the most of it and it just didn't feel like it flowed very well for a small apartment. I loved the view, I loved the location, I thought it could have been really really nice. The deal breaker was the mould. 
and there was a lot of it. Like the, the things that you see on these apartment searches in Paris, that they're nuts to me that it's okay for a landlord to, you know, put that forward as a viable option. But not only then that you you also have, you know, 20 people wanting to actually rent it. There was no way I was going to move into an apartment that had mold in it. Um, so that was a no another one I didn't apply for. Apartment number three was back in my favourite in the fifth arrondissement. It was above a florist, which I mean, I just loved it. I absolutely fell in love with the front door of this place. It was big and wooden and just, yeah, just made me feel happy. It was like the kind of door that I'd been visualising as part of my manifestation. In terms of price, it was the cheapest at 878 euros. It was also the smallest, so it was a 20 square meter studio. It was the location that made me want to go and look at it. It was on the sixth floor. There was a lift, which is always great news in Paris because not every building, a lot of the older buildings, they don't have lifts. I was really excited to go and see it. It was a group visit. There were quite a lot of us and it was a dump. It was an absolute awful. It, the, the vibration of that place, it was just no. The guy who was renting it, bless him, I felt really sorry for it. I was a little bit conflicted. Like part of me wanted to say, come on, you know, get it, get it together. What, what are you doing? But also I'm wondering like, what is it that's made him want to live like this? He was literally, he just had his mattress in the middle of the studio and he got his, you know, his ashtray on there with loads of cigarette ends. He did not look like he was in the best state bless him um yeah and that it just was not it wasn't for me the floors were um like really really dark and really really plasticky it was it hadn't been loved it hadn't been didn't think that I would ever get it to the kind of place that I wanted to live in um, the view was really nice, the location was really nice, I'm sure someone's living there, I hope they're happy there, it was not for me. It was a real shame, because in terms of budget and size, it was, it was great, it was actually cheaper than the apartment that I was renting previously. Later, that same day, I found, I fell in love with this apartment like in terms if you consider apartment viewings as first dates this was love at first sight I wanted this apartment so badly from the moment I saw the front door it was the most expensive that I saw of course it was it was in the seventh arrondissement which actually isn't a place that I spend a lot of time um, my favourite museum is there, but other than that, it's a very quiet residential kind of arrondissement, I would say. Very near to the Eiffel Tower, but lovely. And it was ticking all the boxes in terms of beauty, I would say. Um, I was just completely bowled over by it. I walked in, I was like... I just love it and I just want it and it was so similar to the apartment that I'd put on my vision board. I thought it was the one. I was the first person to see it and it was the first one that I applied for. It was the biggest as well as the most expensive so it was 1,350 euros a month which felt like I was really going to be pushing it. Um, it was top, top, top end of my budget and it was 36 square meters and if I'm being honest no I don't need 36 square meters but I just as an as a Parisian apartment you couldn't not appreciate it and and love it it was so so beautiful and I could visualize my entire life there I loved the view onto the courtyard I loved the shutters on the windows. I loved the wooden floors. I loved the coving. I loved the fireplace, the windows, like just everything. I loved everything about this apartment. It wasn't perfect though. The kitchen was actually really dark, I would say. And, you know, 
for my personal situation, it was really expensive and too big for, for what I needed. It was the first one that I applied for. My boyfriend at the time was like, we need to get you this apartment. We need to make it happen. Come on, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna call them because I, I applied as soon as I left uh, and I didn't hear anything. He was like, we need to call them because it's quite, it's chaotic the Parisian apartment rental market, like you, it's quite, um, it's quite aggressive, I would say. Like no one will ghost you faster than a Parisian estate agent. You'll just never hear from them again. They don't care. Um, but I was like, no, if it's meant to be, then it will be. And I need to be open to where I'm meant to live. Like I didn't want to chase it if it wasn't right for me. Um, and then a couple of days later, I saw it re-advertised on another website. So I knew that I hadn't got it. They clearly weren't happy with any of the candidates for it. I'm sure they were very precious about it. It was a very beautiful apartment. I would have been precious too. As much as it broke my heart, that one, it was a no. And then on one spring Monday morning, I came to see the apartment that I am now living in and I wasn't sure I actually wasn't sure about it I can't share the exact location with you as to where it is but it is in the fifth arrondissement which is my favorite and it is like a five minute walk from the Jardin de Luxembourg so in terms of location it, it was perfect it was also freshly it is should say that I'm actually in this apartment now. It is freshly renovated, which is such a gift, you know, to move into a place where nothing needs doing, there's no painting, nothing like that it was tick, tick, tick. The building that it is in is absolutely beautiful. It had the wooden floors, it had the white walls, it had the windows, it had absolutely everything that I was looking for. But I think I was so in this mindset of looking for perfection and I had it so clearly in my head what I wanted. I actually came away not sure. I applied for it, sent my dossier straight away. And it wasn't until my landlord, my current landlord said that he wanted me to have this apartment, which is a, oh, it's such an, it's like such an honor. You want to make an acceptance speech because... I think 20 people applied for it and I was the one that was chosen. So it's, you know, it's really, it's the best feeling when you get an apartment that you've had to really um, fight for, I guess. But then I had this moment, I don't know if it was like um, fear of commitment or something. I had this freak out moment where I didn't know if it was the one. I didn't know if I actually wanted it. So I was messaging my friends and they were like, make a list, pros and cons. So I did that and decided that yes, this was actually the one. And two weeks later, I was moving in. In terms of size, it sits in the middle of what I was looking for. It is a 25 square meter apartment. It is a studio, so it is completely open, which I love. And in terms of budget, it was a little bit over the ideal that I wanted to spend. It's 1,180 euros a month which is is a hundred euros more than my old apartment it is also one square meter less so it's a 25 square meter studio whereas my apartment was a 26 square meter studio but kind of wasn't because it actually had a separate bedroom but it was still called a studio size wise i'm not really feeling much of a difference it's just a different kind of layout I'm really really happy with it I cannot wait to show you I have been busy these last three weeks so I will definitely do a proper finished apartment tour for you very very soon I know I've just shown it you there the bare bones if you want like a sneak peek of what I've been doing Instagram is definitely the place to go because I'm sharing little bits on there all the time but mostly I just wanted to take you on a little apartment hunt around Paris with me because I love watching these kinds of videos. I'm super nosy about prices, what you can get where for your money. Let me know in the comments what you what you think the apartments 
that I went to look at. Let me know what you think of this one. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one.